Hey there! If you're watching this, it means you already know that XAMPP comes out of the box with MoriaDB. If you want to install another database management system like PostgreSQL, you have no choice but to install and configure it on your own. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. By the end of this video, you'll have PostgreSQL installed and configured in the XAMPP environment for Windows, and you'll know how to start and stop the service. You can still use this tutorial even if you don't use XAMPP. That's because we are not interfering with XAMPP, but with a PHP. So if you have your own PHP environment set up, you are already good to go. Moreover, you'll also be introduced to pgAdmin, the most popular open source administration tool for PostgreSQL. All right, let's get started. Certainly, to follow this tutorial, make sure you have XAMPP installed and you are a Windows 10 or 11 user. If you are using Linux, you can still find crucial information on how to install and use PostgreSQL, but the steps will be different. So keep that in mind. All the links used in this video can be found in the description. Now let's go ahead and download the PostgreSQL installer from enterprisedb.com. I'm going to select the latest version, in my case it's 16, and the Windows um, 64 bits. Click the download button. The executable is being downloaded. Right, open the executable. Click next. And here you have to select the path where you want to install uh, PostgreSQL. So in my case, it's G SAMP and let's call it PGSQL where 16 is a PostgreSQL version. This is a good practice to avoid getting confused when working with multiple versions. If you are watching this video long after its publication, there has most likely been a newer version of PostgreSQL released, so use that version as a folder name. Then click Next. This installer also comes with PG Admin 4 and command line tools, which are a great addition to your toolbox. I recommend you install them as well, and you can opt out of installing Stack Builder for now. Then click Next. Next. Here we can set the password. I'm going to go with root. The port, leave it as the default. Default. And then click Next. And now wait for it to install it. Now we need to get PostgreSQL to talk with PHP. Navigate to XAMPP PHP and open the php.ini file. Then we have to enable the PDO SQL and the PG SQL extensions. We can do that by removing the preceding semicolons. And then save the file. Now let's go ahead and check if the connection with PostgreSQL works. I'm using VS Code with CodeRunner extension that allows me to run the code without starting a local server. But if you don't like this approach, you can go ahead and open up XAMPP, start the Apache server, paste this code into your script, and then run the script. But I'm just going to go ahead and run the code inside VS Code. And as you can see, uh, the script returned the PG connection object because the connection is successful. Otherwise, it would have returned false. If you go to PG connect method, we can see that uh, the return uh, statement says that it can return resource or false. Great, now we have a working PostgreSQL connection. XAMPP UIs doesn't have start and uh, stop buttons like it does for MySQL. So how are we going to start and stop the PostgreSQL service? When you install PostgreSQL on a Windows machine, it installs a service on the system. So this service can be controlled from the services Windows tool. 
you can open this tool by pressing Windows and R and then type in services.msc. Here you can find um, all the services that are available on your Windows machine. Search for Postgres and yeah, here is our service. It's called PostgreSQL-X64-16. And by default, um, this service will run at startup, meaning that every time you start your machine, the PostgreSQL service will start as well. If you are okay with this, you don't need to make any changes. Personally, I don't want PostgreSQL to start with Windows, so I'll set it to manual. So right click, go to properties, then on the general tab, go to the startup type label and select manual, then apply and OK. And now I'm going to show you how to start and stop the service via this um, service panel. So as you can see, you have here the stop button. And then uh, actually, let's try it and see if it works. So we stop the service. And as you can see, we can connect to the PostgreSQL database. Now let's start it once again. We run the code. And yeah, now we have a connection. But perhaps you don't want to do this manually. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, start and stop the service via command line. So at this moment, our service is running. So I'll just go ahead and stop it. So that would be net stop PostgreSQL x64.16. This is the name of the service. Ah, I'm getting access denied because I have to run this as administrator. That's good to know. So I'm now running this um, command line as administrator. And let's go ahead and net stop PostgreSQL x64.16. And now the service is stopping. And let's try it again and see if it stopped. Yeah, we are getting the error. Now let's go ahead and start it. The service is starting. All right. Let's just make sure we can connect to it. Yep, yeah, and we have a connection. All right. Now that we have PostgreSQL up and running, let's go ahead and access the database, do some queries, and view some data with PG Admin. First and foremost, let's create a connection. Go to Servers, right click Register, Server. Let's give it a local host name. And then go to the Connection tab. And localhost would be the host name. The port is a default one. Username is Postgres. The password in my case is root. Let's save the password for future connections. Press save. Then double click and open the localhost server. And now let's paste in the query that I created beforehand. So basically what it does, it creates a voucher code table with some columns and then I'm populating uh, the table with random data. All right, now let's run the query. Awesome. And then let's go to tables. And here is our uh, voucher code table. Click this button to view data or press Alt Shift V. And let me make this one larger. And here is our data. And this is how you create manual queries and view data in a basic way. All right, that was it for this video. 
I hope it helps you in setting up a PostgreSQL database in your XAMPP environment. If you enjoy this step-by-step -step guide, stick around as I'll be creating more similar tutorials. Wishing you a wonderful day and I look forward to catching you in the next one.